There are so many popular fantasy books and series that I have yet to get to, and that's gonna change this week. Well, maybe not, because there's so many books out there, and there's always gonna be a new book that's trending. But I'm gonna get through three this week. Hopefully. The first book I want to read is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. This is a part of the Throne of Glass series. I feel so far behind in the Sarah J Maas universe because I have all these to read and then I want to read Crescent City 1, 2, and 3. Everybody loves these books and I'm just feeling left out. This is the fourth book in the series plus there's a prequel. I have already started this book. I feel like started maybe is the wrong term. I am 280 pages into it, but that is not even halfway. Fantasy books just tend to be longer, and I was giving myself a little bit of a head start. This is a lot of people's favorite series, and do I know why? No, not really. I don't, I don't get it yet. But according to my friends, with what happens in this book, I will become addicted to the series, and I will have to binge the rest of it. The Throne of Glass series is about assassins, and kingdoms, and royalty, and get this, get this, a throne of glass. So far my thoughts on this book are that the character dynamics are interesting. There's a lot of hot goss. No one ever speaks about fantasy books in like gossipy ways, but I just imagine like being on the phone with a friend and them explaining this plot to me. I'd be like, oh, no way. Like that is so juicy. Like imagine a gossip girl or like a lady whistle down in one of these worlds. Anyway, I better shut up about gossip and like get reading because I have like 370 pages left. Selena Sardothian in a ring with Reich Meadows, who do you think is gonna win? I feel like Selena is the obvious answer, but we also know Reich is a little hot-headed. Anyway, I'm 550 pages into this book. This means I only have 100 pages left, and if you know anything about Sarah J Maas books, is that the last 100 pages always go crazy. She just likes to fill the last 100 pages with a lot of action that leaves you like, now before I tell you my thoughts on this book so far, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video. You wanna see something cool? Now my glasses match my outfit. Thank you Pair Eyewear for sponsoring this video. The way Pair Eyewear works is you go on their website and pick out a base frame. I have the Reese. All of this is online and it's so convenient because you don't have to leave the comfort of your own home. You can use their virtual try-on tool to see what the glasses look like on your face, which is so helpful when ordering things online. Once you pick out a base frame you like, you can just add in your prescription or you can get blue light lenses like me. Then you can look at their wide selection of top frames. I wear a lot of green, so of course I got a simple green top frame. I love the show Friends, so of course I wanted these sensual perk ones. I'm also a fan of Marvel, so I just had to snag these. They have all the comics on here. I also got a black and white top frame of the Marvel comics. These remind me of something Lily and Lo would wear. Having my glasses remind me of some of my favorite fictional characters makes my heart so happy. Pear has such a wide variety of designs from Harry Potter to sports teams and being able to just switch your glasses like that just brings me so much joy. One of the best parts about Pear eyewear is how affordable they are. These top frames start at only $25. Pear is a great company with excellent customer service. They also help provide glasses for children in need. Click the link in the description box for 15% off your first pair or use my code ErinRodder15. Once again, thank you so much, Pair Eyewear, for sponsoring this video. Now to talk about this. So much has happened in this book. There are certain books in this series that are so slow and like nothing happens in them, like Crown of Midnight. But this book is so jam-packed with action, like there's always something going on. There are so many different pieces to puzzles that are just finally connecting. So far, this has definitely been my favorite book in the series. Obviously, I still have 100 pages left in the book, but I feel like I'm ready for this tandem read. I think I just lied. If we're being honest, I'm gonna be putting that off for months. But I can and will do it at some point. But for right now, I'm gonna finish this book. So many questions that I wanna ask But I can find the reasons why You always find a smile I 
just finished Queen of Shadows and I was really hoping it was going to be a five star read, but I think I'm going to rate it like four point something. I don't know what the point something is, but it's four star read. This book is my favorite in the series so far. It just didn't give me that five star feeling and I don't know if I'm like broken or something, but I've only rated one book in 2024 five stars. And before reading that, the last time I had rated a book five stars was in October. I feel like I'm not really a harsh rater, but I just haven't been connecting with the books as much recently. A lot happened in the last 100 pages and it sort of wraps up one bit and then sets up for another, which I guess that's how books and series usually go. Not a lot of thoughts are going on in my head right now. Maybe in another life I would rate the series five stars. I was really hoping I would rate a book in the series five stars by now. I really like the characters, most of them anyway. There's a couple I could do without, but it's a solid book. All right, the next book I'm reading is The Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is also a very popular book that I've seen a lot of five star ratings for. Will it be my next five star read? Hopefully, really, I'm begging for one. This book is about vampires, and I, I really don't know much else. I feel like it's a Romeo and Juliet story. Under the dust jacket is so cute. The back says never trust, never yield, always guard your heart. All right, I'm gonna get started on this book tonight. My love was lost when you came and took it all. I don't think I've ever told you guys her name. Her name is Tia. My mind says stop, but my heart I'm 100 pages into The Serpent in the Wings of Night and I was so off when it comes to what this book is about. This book follows a human who was adopted by one of the vampire kings. She enters some sort of deadly vampire competition that happens every 100 years. I am a little confused on like the point of the competition. I guess people are just trying to like prove themselves slash get a wish. The competition consists of different trials that remind me of like the first Throne of Glass book. I believe the trials are like squid games where like if you survive you keep going. And if you don't, you obviously don't. I don't know, I'm not loving this book, but I heard like the ending is something. The ending catches people's attention. And I will keep going, I'm just not sure this is my cup of tea as of now. I'm not connecting with the writing as much as I hoped I would, but there's still plenty of time for that to change, so I'm hopeful that I will end up really liking this. Anyway, my goal is to finish this today, but it's already 5 p.m. and I have 350 pages to read. So I really better get reading. I will keep you updated. But at some point, we must sugar. And when we find no one wants to stop. And this time goes by, I wonder. Oh, oh, can we reverse the I'm 140 pages into The Serpent in the Wings of Night. I'm having a really hard time focusing on this book. I'm just not very engaged, and I'm on day five of reading fantasy for a week. So I think I'm gonna switch gears and pick up One Dark Window. If I somehow finish this before the week is up, I will come back to The Serpent in the Wings of Night, but that's all an if at this point due to my schedule with school. This book is a gothic fantasy and I'm just hoping that it like grabs my attention a little more. All right, now I'm gonna get started with One Dark Window. saw it coming. I'm 100 pages in and this book is so good. I'm gonna talk more about this book in the morning but for now I'm just gonna continue to read and get as far as I can before I call it a night. A maiden must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom in the dark. Lush gothic fantasy day. It's a debut? It's crazy. This is crazy for a debut. <laughs> this book, so good. So good, so good, so good. This book is so good. I feel like this book is kind of hard to explain, so I'm just gonna highlight some things on the back. The main character has an ancient mercurial spirit trapped in her head. It's a monster named Nightmare. Anyway, when our main character meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road, her life takes a drastic turn. Thrust into a world of shadow and deception, she joins a dangerous quest to cure blunder of the dark magic infecting it. Except the highwayman just so happens to be the king's own nephew, captain of the most dangerous men in blunder, and guilty of high treason. 
this book just gives off a dark fairy tale. It reminds me a lot of like Stephanie Garber's writing in Worlds. She wrote Caraval and Once Upon a Broken Heart. The vibes are very similar to that, but dark, but not dark as in scary. I was a little hesitant going into this book because I'm like, there's a monster in her head and it's like dark. Like, am I gonna like that? But the monster reminds me more so as like a sidekick and not something you should fear. I'm just really enjoying the writing of this and I just feel very connected to the characters which I've been searching for that connection. This is a fantasy romance and the two main characters <laughs> don't exactly like each other. Tension! 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 I'm pretty sure this is a new adult book. Our main character is 20 and her name is a mouthful, Elspeth Spindle. I have just under 300 pages I would like to read today so I better get going. I'm gonna finish this as soon as possible and I will keep you updated on my thoughts on this book. One Dark Window is divided up into three parts and I just made it to part three. I am a little stressed out. This is the first book in a duology and so I'm really scared that this book is going to end on like a cliffhanger and not everything's going to be all wrapped up with a nice pretty bow. Objectively speaking, it's like a good thing that the book is stressing me out because that means the plot is engaging and I care about the characters and I care about what happens. But I just don't need more things stressing me out. I have enough things on my plate right now. Like, I don't need to be worried about these fictional characters. Just kidding, my favorite thing to do is worry about fictional characters. There's only like 70 pages left, and that's why I'm kind of just like, oh my gosh, it's gonna end on like a cliffhanger. Which like, obviously, there's a second book. There has to be something to keep us going. But this book is so good. I will be finishing it tonight. Part two was a little bit slow, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless, and I have a feeling part three is just gonna be like super hectic. All right, now it's time to finish this book. Certainly a juicy story. I enjoyed the first half of this book more than the second half. That being said, I still really enjoyed the second half. Based on how this book ends, I have a feeling I'm not gonna like the second book as much as I liked this one. I feel like I'm still gonna like it because I really like this writing and I liked all the characters. I just fear it's not gonna hit as hard. This book was really, really good. I feel like the world building isn't too hard to understand. That being said, it still is there. There is a lot of lore to learn in this book. Everything in this is pretty straightforward. It reads like a YA book, but according to Storygraph, it's not one. I really enjoy reading fantasy, but I also really love reading romance, and I'm ready to just read like a straight romance book. Erin from a week later here, I have quite a few things I want to add. Like, I don't know, my rating for this book that I forgot to mention. One Dark Window is a four star read for me. I really liked the connection between the characters. I think they had so much chemistry. There were just so many elements elements of this book that made me so giddy and happy and I really thought it was going to be a five star read, same with Queen of Shadows. I feel like at the beginning of the book I really had that feeling that I was like, oh wait, this is going to be my next five star read and then when I got to the end I was like, oh, it kind of falls a little flat. Something I've noticed is that when I rate a book four stars I find myself trying to justify why it was not a five star read and I feel like all the joy books bring me when I rate a book four stars kind of get lost in those moments and I just want to make it clear that when I rate a book four stars that means I really liked it. There's just like this feeling that I can't really describe that I get after reading a five star book. It's like you finish the book and you're immediately like, that was the best thing I've ever read, I need to read it again. Or maybe the feeling's more so the world feels comforting and I want to go back there. 
Obviously, in this video, I didn't read that many books, but I feel like I've been like in the fantasy headspace for a while, and I'm ready for just like a plain romance that is super cheesy and is gonna make me smiley. Which I feel like the rom com vibe is just so fitting with like spring and summer, so I guess it kind of makes sense. But I would say like the Throne of Glass series, One Dark Window, those are both slow burns. And I want some romance just given to me on a silver platter. Moving on, I really want to talk about the amount I'm posting. I'm sure most of you don't notice when it takes me an extra week to post, but like, I obviously notice. I was so thankful for all of the nice comments that I received and all the sweet DMs. Like, it really does mean the world to me. I'm just gonna let you know my schedule is jam-packed this month and so videos may be coming out at a slower pace. But of course, I'm gonna continue to like read and film anytime I can. I'm really excited for the summer when I have more time to read and make videos and I hope you will stick around till then. But for now, I hope you like this video. If you would like, comment, and subscribe, I would very much appreciate it. I will see you at some point or another, besties. Bye!